Hi, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. I think it's safe to say the latest NVIDIA GPU launch hasn't gone as well as many fans would have hoped for. You had the low stock situation of the 3080s where not a whole lot of people were able to get stock. And then you also had the scalpers and bots taking all of the stock on NVIDIA's website. And as well as that, I think the 3090s ended up being a little bit underwhelming according to the reviews. That said, I think the latest problem has all of those others beats. It seems as though there could be a design oversight issue with the 3080s and the 3090s and that it could be that one of the components on the cards causes the cards to crash at high frequencies. Now just a disclaimer, I'm not an electrical engineer or hardware engineer, so if you were to ask me a technical question or to do a calculation, uh, I'm probably not the best person to ask and I think you should reserve those questions for Buildzoid or Igor's from Igor's lab. Uh, I'm just here to report on this as accurately as I can and hopefully get this story out. And uh, I'll leave some more uh, links down below where you can go and get more information about this issue. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get to the main issue at hand. Over the last couple of days, 3080 owners were starting to report issues of their cards crashing, particularly if they overclocked their cards, increasing the offset using software overclocking. However, Nvidia's own GPU Boost also self-boosts the card when there is temperature or frequency headroom available. Some 3080 owners found that clocks over 2 GHz would crash the desktop. Now, it's considered normal that if you push the card too hard in overclocking, you get crashes due to instability. That's not a faulty card, that's just pushing things beyond what the card is capable of. However, the issue here is that the GPU boost would push the card over 2 GHz and it would crash on certain types of cards. And it was found, at least from Eagles Labs article and Buildzoid's video, that cards that have cheaper capacitors had problems dealing with the high frequency at the GPU. It is the capacitors that hold the charge to deliver them to the GPU and these are directly located on the underside of the GPU as pictured here. The normal process is that NVIDIA provides a reference design and a base level minimum specification that all the AIB partners have to adhere to to get the board approved by NVIDIA. The capacitors were one component where AIB partners could have chosen what type that they wanted to use and some partners chose more expensive parts than others. The cheaper ones that Eagles Lab refers to in his article are post caps though Buildzoid notes that SP caps are mainly used these days in GPUs, and these are a polymer material. The AIB partners could have used a more expensive MLCC which uses a ceramic material. To meet the tight margins in MSRP that AIB partners are working with, some of them use more of the cheaper SP caps, which cause the cars to crash at high frequencies. Jay's two cents explained this as electrical interference which interrupted the voltage delivery as the cause of the problem. Cards like the Zotac Trinity 3080 or the Gigabyte Eagle 3090 are using six of the SP caps which seemingly have issues handling the higher clock frequencies over 2 GHz. MSI Gaming X Trio replaced one of those SP caps with one set of 10 MLCCs which seem to have solved the most serious of the problems. The Founders Edition from Nvidia uses two sets of 10 MLCCs and the Asus Tough and the Asus Strix uses all six sets as MLCCs. This really seems like an oversight in my opinion, one where Nvidia themselves were assessing all these boards from AIB partners and did not pick up on this issue during the approval process. Nvidia themselves had two sets of MLCCs and it's possible they had tested and found this to be an issue, but this message was obviously not managed well enough between both Nvidia and their board partners. A certain portion of the blame has to lie with NVIDIA as they are the ones approving the designs and also not releasing the drivers for the cards until right up to launch, meaning very little testing could be done on these cards due to secrecy concerns. The problem is very real given that EVGA have all but confirmed they had this issue as well. So what now? Number 1. The Band-Aid fix will be NVIDIA issues a VBIOS fix on the affected cards like the Trinity which lower the voltage and frequency possible so it stays below 2 GHz. This is still going to perform better than stock but it doesn't max out the GPU as one would hope. 
You could also underclock the card yourself manually by going into the overclocking software and just downclocking your card, but if you've paid that much for the GPU, it seems like a pretty disappointing solution. Number two, it's possible these affected cards will get redesigned with the MLCC capacitors, in which case it would fix the issue, however, there would really need to be some clear messaging from the board partners, as I would imagine, given the choice, most gamers are just going to pick up the Asus cards with the better capacitors for a while. That's definitely going to hurt the other brands. Number three, if you're not desperate to upgrade right now, I would really recommend sitting out for a while and wait to hear some clear messaging from Nvidia on this, as well as any other potential issues that may occur during the launch window. Now it's very possible that this might not actually be the problem, and Nvidia come back with an entirely different explanation, but we have some smoke in the air, and we have both EVGA and Colorful switching their designs late in the game, indicating there was an issue these AIB partners picked up. That would be enough for me to just wait a little bit. Alright, that's it for this one. Make sure to click on the like button if you like the video and also to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.